Keith, can you just update us with injuries and problems for tomorrow? No, we've um, we've been all right, guys. It's, it's, it's been um, it's been a smoothish week um, on on that front. Everyone seems to have come through, apart from the usual a few bruises here and there. Um, nothing of nothing of note to um, to report really. So now we're in, we're in a good place. Could you give, give us any guide on maybe how many changes you're looking at tomorrow? Yeah, so look, it's, I think that's always the balance, isn't it, of friendlies, if you, if you want to put it like that. And you know, look, we are trying to build a squad for conscious of potentially four games in June. Obviously, not entirely sure what's, what way that's going to materialise. So Stephen's always very firm on caps aren't given out, and I'm, I very much feel that, feel that way as well. Um, you, you have to earn them, but equally, you have to reward players that have been very professional around maybe not being selected, not coming into the game, and, and we understand that disappointment. Um, so, yeah, yeah. look, there, there will be changes, I think, but, but the team itself hasn't been selected yet. Things are, are looking really good at the moment, but can I take you back a year to the Luxembourg game, the defeat, the, the empty stadium, the sort of gloom and doom? How are you and Stephen feeling at that time, and can you sort of compare and contrast? Yeah, not as good as we're feeling now, funny enough. Um, Oh, they were they were tough times. There's, there's no, no doubt about it. You look back at the games, which we we always analyse. We go back. You see the empty stadiums, as you've mentioned. They weren't particularly nice times anyway for for football people. Um, but when we look at that day, that was obviously a, a really poor day at the office. We we said that at the time, and it doesn't feel any different now. I think the obvious comparisons now will be made to, towards Lithuania, who we face tomorrow evening. Um, and it's about the mentality of the players. I don't think it's a, a case of underestimating opposition. I don't think that's ever really been a case for, for Irish teams, if I'm being entirely honest. Um, and it certainly wouldn't be from, from our part. Um, the players will be made aware of strengths and weaknesses. They'll be treated the exact same respect that we gave Belgium in our analysis of them. Um, and obviously we're going into the game looking to, to play the way we have been playing, play with confidence, play with a verve, excite the fans and ultimately win the game. Stephen said you've given up all your media work. Why is that? Why, why are you looking differently at this sort of second phase? It's only quite a while ago. Um, it, it was this is a job that I love, that I have an unbelievable amount of passion for. I don't see it as a job really, um, and my time was getting taken up in areas that I wasn't as passionate about. Um, I'm very, very fortunate to be in this position and have the input that I do have and have that working relationship with Steve and that, that he allows me to, to crack on and, and do what I do and, and we work very much as a team and it's, like I said, it's something I'm very, very passionate about and, and when I sat down and, and reflected on things and, and my time management and, and how I want to evolve away from what I actually do in here and how I spend time watching our players and doing the, doing the, the normal due diligence, I suppose, I want to evolve a little bit more and spend more time to become a better coach, better assistant, um, and evolve myself in, in that regard, rather than having to go to certain games in, in a different capacity. Cheers, thank you. Tony? Thank you, Hey, Tony, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Um, Keith, in the 18 months or whatever, you haven't been at a, at a press conference. Hmm. Is, is this a, a change of policy on Stephen's behalf or your behalf? Uh, I said, initially, I certainly didn't want to, if I'm being entirely honest. I didn't feel I needed to, and you know, I was I was quite comfortable with that. And this has only come about really yesterday, the day before. And Stephen just mentioned it to me, and I said, "No problem." He obviously does has to do quite a lot, as you as you're all aware of. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. It's not a policy we've sat down and, and spoken about. Obviously, we work very closely together, and it, it's something Stephen mentioned over the weekend. And, and I've obviously got no issues at all, and, and no problems doing. Because you're a, an excellent communicator and. Uh, it's good for us, I guess, to have uh, another view of inside the team. Um, so, is it something in the future you you think you might be doing? I'm not sure, really. Um, like I said, we haven't sat down and devised the plan. It's not as um, pivotal as, as other aspects of my job. If I'm being entirely honest, I'm, I'm more thinking about the session that we're we're going to be taking in half an hour or so. So, um, what it's basically whatever the manager wants. It's only like that's basically if I can relieve him of of any of that burden at times and. In terms of the time management, if he has to prioritise certain aspects of his of his job, that's ultimately what I'm what I'm here to do. There's, there's a clear my job title. I'm, I'm an assistant, so I'll, I'll try and do that where I can. So, but ha having said all that, you did come out and very passionately um, support Stephen 
maybe when things looked a bit rough, mm. there was a, a lot of criticism. Did you, did you felt that was necessary at that time because maybe his job was in doubt? I felt it was necessary that you've touched on it that there was a different voice maybe because Stevens had to front a lot obviously during that that time and, and obviously I've, I've touched on it already we're, we're in this together and he's always been the, the focal point and having to face tough questions when things weren't going particularly well and we, and we were enduring a, a bit of a tough period obviously so yeah during that time I, I, I did feel it was important you know it, it was my idea I did say it to Stephen obviously and he didn't think it was a good idea. Obviously, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have done that. Um, I think at the time it was. I was very comfortable where we were, and the, the process, I suppose, that was in place, and, and the building we were trying to do, and rebuilding that we were trying to to do with the squad, and how we were trying to get the team to play. So, yeah, I suppose that's that's where it came from in terms of even though the results hadn't been amazing to that point, I, I did feel like we, we were in a good place and it was coming, I could feel it, I could sense it you see it every time you, you go onto the training pitch and with the players that we've, we've got, such a, a humble and um, ambitious group of players that we have, I, I just felt that was probably it, it just needed a different voice at the time But well, if the results didn't turn around surely the manager's position was in doubt? I think football being football, Tony, it's always result dependent, isn't it, and then you're always beholden to the powers that be you know, we're not playing. It's not development football. It's you know we're in the we're in big boys football here. So it's that's the nature of of the business. That ultimately, if results didn't come, you know, then decisions have to be made. And and, and like I said, we we felt we were in a good place, even though the results hadn't been good. We were comfortable with, with what we were putting in place, um, and the results did come. And briefly, what was the key element to the improvement? It's hard to put an exact, I know the lads have spoken last week, I've, I've heard little bits and bobs about the summer trip that we got to spend time together. You know, very, very difficult times, as we all know, during the pandemic to try and create a team environment in such difficult circumstances, even back at the hotel when players weren't allowed in rooms together. And it, it's a big part of what we do. And obviously introducing so many, not so much young players, but players full stop into the squad. And, and that takes time to come together, both socially and, and also in terms of football and what you're trying to do so summer started it and I think over the autumn then it, it certainly went into a, we, we took steps forward major steps forward Damien please thank you um, if you go back to that time when the results weren't good so whenever Stephen came in to see us he was always very confident and confident what was it like away from the line right? um, it's always very composed always very, always very much sticking to the principles and the belief that he has in the in what the players are capable of, of achieving, um, of course we make we make little tweaks here and there. But yeah, he's he's a very strong individual, and I, I thought he dealt with it remarkably well. Because like I've said, there's there were there were some obviously not very nice days that we had to endure. You've got to take it on the chin. Um, I say to him quite often about when I go back into my local butchers, they're quick to tell me about what we should and shouldn't be doing, and sometimes it's not particularly pleasant. Um, but no, during that process, I, I thought he, he stood really firm. He Very, very easy, I would imagine, as the, the manager, to maybe take a step back, to sacrifice maybe some of your values, your principles, to for, for a short-term view. But he stood by it, and, I, and, I, and obviously I was in full support of that. Can I just ask, you played in the Ireland team and had a, a very definite way of playing and had success in that way. How does that compare with the way Stephen is trying to do things now? Yeah, I would say very different, very different. The, the Ireland team that I played in was very well organised, very difficult to break down. Um, the main focus was what we did without the ball, I would say, and then there was a, a big reliance on the, the technically best players in the team, the ones that had the most ability in an attacking sense, obviously. So it, it was based around that, with a manager that probably doesn't, didn't have enough belief in maybe what we could do or maybe was stuck in the way that he really seen the game played and the way he'd always coached the game. Um, but Stephen obviously and myself included see it differently uh, and we've obviously tried to take the team in a, in a slightly different direction. Joe and then Gavin to end the live section please. Hey pal. Uh, John was just talking there about uh, how important momentum is in soccer and sport in general. Mm -hmm. Looking ahead to the Nations League and the importance of maintaining the momentum going into that. Is tomorrow's a must win game? Tomorrow's very important for to, con to continue the, the confidence 
that has become very, very apparent in the players and how they've approached games, regardless of the opposition. Um, it's all about building. The first message last week was probably along those lines that we don't just want to you know, go back. We, we need to continue to, to take a step forward as a group in every department and we built on that all last week. Last week's training sessions were very, very good and in some aspects you, you're slightly worried that it's maybe gone a little too well going into games, ironically. Um, so now going into tomorrow it, it is very much looking towards the summer. Players will be given opportunities that we feel they deserve um, and we just want to continue the good work. Just right on that, Josie is in unbelievable form at the moment. As things stand, it's likely to be playing championship football next season. What you've seen of him, do you think he's a Premier League footballer? I think Jose is capable of doing whatever, whatever he wants to do, if I'm being honest. Uh, we watch him a lot at Rotherham. Um, I've got friends that coach at Rotherham, so I, I've known about Jose for a long time. Um, I know it's been well documented at this stage that using him in slightly different ways and attacking right wing back for them. His uh, contract situation, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm, I'm sure Rotherham will be worried about next season regardless of whether they go up or, or stay in League One because he's um, he certainly shone for us hasn't he he's been a, a breath of fresh air on the pitch off the pitch as a human being he's, he's quite a special young man and we're delighted to have him in and, and delighted to see him flourish Gavin Hi Guy um, How are you going? When you scored early against lower ranked opposition it's generally not well like the way down the down there's no one to get there when you haven't got that early goal after good starts less so I think at home goal mm-hmm. the way down is that something that the team tells us to prove that if the early goals can come, you can still play your football and you can hold yourself on the same Yeah, I think it's important because it's very difficult to to gauge exactly how games are going to materialise. You, you're right, we have to do it on Saturday. You know, you go goal down, that's not in the plan, obviously it's not in the script, but it's it's how you react to that and it's obviously in a different way to, to what you're alluding to, but it's, it, it's, it's a reaction, it's not a, a panic. We have to stick to the way we're trying to play and then if... if needs be and we try and get a message on at some stage to maybe tweak something that they've done differently we would like to improve on we need a little bit more even on Saturday I, th- I thought at times we we forced it a little bit when we didn't need to some of the even against top top opposition we maybe picked the wrong pass the wrong selection so yeah, it's very much sticking to to the game plan and, and and obviously being respectful of them that at times they are very much going to frustrate us and potentially drop off we'll see what way they they start the game, so yeah, it's it, it's managing the game. I think will will be key and, and not deviating away from what we're going to put in place today on the training pitch and what we've already shown them on Lithuania. Okay, we're moving to the embargoes.